Hey team, hey, how you doing? Hey, so this is a uh, quick video on the, the GC Automated Edition. So right now this is relatively new with 35 of hours worth of coding and endless checks and a lot of things built in. But simply this video is to show you that uh, how it works, how it deploys and how it makes your life simple. So basically what Google GCE is, is basically you're setting up a virtual instance. So you can see right here, uh, let's see, we're gonna go to instance. And basically you're deploying a virtual machine. So right here, this is just a test machine. But at the end of the day, you can see that it has an external IP address. I can SSH into it and everything. The thing is, in order to do all this, it was a lot of work. And, and the thing is, if you missed one step, um, it was hell to pay basically, like everything from missing the firewall. So if you go to the wiki here, which has been a little bit updated, um, you'll see that there's the Google Feeder Edition. And you notice that there was two articles earlier. This is the manual deployment. And you see that you got established projects, you got to enable the API. Yes, you could do so many things, but you forget to enable the drive API, it'll drive you up the wall. And you actually got to enable two APIs, something I left out of my old instructions and didn't really pay attention to, um, but I caught it um, trying to program this thing out. Um, so basically, you're just gonna go ahead and deploy a virtual machine, set your CPU, you see there's a lot, a lot of steps. So if you missed a firewall, like I said, I mentioned earlier, you forget to open the range, or like, again, it was just all kinds of hell to pay. So we made it a lot easier for you uh, in, in deploying the automated edition and I've got to work on the article team a bit more, basically some snippets, but uh, yeah, you just kind of sign up, enable billing, uh, deploy a Plex guide and that's it. So the condition is, is that you already have to have a working copy of Plex guide running somewhere. Um, most people who run Plex guide are already have a regular Plex guide playing somewhere, you know, either their Plex server or something at home. Um, so in order to use the automated edition, basically you need to install Plex Guide on some kind of box somewhere. Uh, it kind of makes sense because, you know, uh, how are you going to deploy all these commands? So unless you're running Ubuntu natively on your computer and you want to install Plex Guide directly, this is something you're going to have to do. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off. Um, I did a little bit of testing just to make sure that everything worked. And uh, it's a good thing I did because uh, there was a billing checker that kind of blocked everything. So in this one, I do have uh, many checkers built in. And the reason for this is because if you forget to do anything, it will just drive you up the wall and then you'll kind of like light up our forms. The only thing I haven't done for version 2.66, which this version will be, is, is that when you deploy it, it doesn't check to see if you set all these conditions. So it's kind of really obvious, but you never know, you know? So if you forget to set the IP, you forget to set the processor count, you don't log into an account and you try to deploy it, it's gonna give you errors. It just kind of makes sense, right? So anyways, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and log into your account. So you can see I'm already logged in. But if many of you used our clone before, it's basically the same process. Oh, authentication. And then you log in and you just call it a day. See, so there we go right there. We log in. Beta tester. So using my test account. And again, I appreciate, uh, like I said, those helping uh, donating to the project. You, you don't realize like how much uh, it's, it's been a help. Um, because it's helped paid for test servers, uh, this you know these additional accounts. Um, so you know, sorry if I mentioned that, but you know if you if you did, I really do appreciate. It. If you didn't, I know we all can't, but I appreciate you just being a member of support in the community. So um, again, this is just a community led effort. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a new project. Now, this is something you typically don't have to do if you already have a project built. When you first establish all the stuff, there's I think it builds an, a, a regular one after you enable the billing. Um, but if you wanna go with building a new project, you can. And it's relatively easy. It's gonna do it for you. Originally, I thought about you letting you name it, but I was like, no, that's a bad idea. So it does PG, TAC, today's date, and then there's a bunch of random numbers that generate after it. And one thing is, is that if you ever run into an error, no two names can be the same. So with the Google instances, you, you think they would have figured something out, but I, I kind of understand why. So here's the system name that I have. So that's the project. So the thing is right now, the API is right now enabled, but guess what? When you establish the project right here, it's going to do all that for you. It's going to install the, it's going to enable the compute API. It's going to uh, enable the drive API. Long story short is if you don't turn those on, you might think everything's working. It's not working. So Okay, so let's see, what project are we gonna go with here? Ah, uh, crap, let's see, because I had one set up earlier. So, should have paid attention to which one I generated. Blazin. 
no, no, no. Isn't it great that you just go back? Okay, so we're looking at ending in 6.2. And the reason is, is because I just want you to see the API is enabling. So we're going to say yes. So 1014191062. So this is the only time that you have to do this. And yes, there's checkers built into this thing too. So if you type the wrong project, it will just kick back in a loop and say, it's not right, do it again instead of just letting you blindly typing in. So enabling the API can roughly take about 30 seconds from what I've noticed. You, so you'll see that. And um, yeah. So meanwhile, while this thing is deploying, I wanna say thank you to Flickr Rate for originally getting Super Transfer 2 going. Uh, I wanna say thank you to Physic for uh, really uh, taking the PG Blitz and, and really getting it uh, fixed up um, because it was an idea I had and uh, yeah, it's just really complicated to deploy it. Um, and then Thurza, you can never say your name right, Thurza, um, you know, for the idea of uh, getting some of these things going. So um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes from a lot of the members getting this. So, okay. So sometimes up to a minute, right? But again, I'm just showing you this real time because I want you to see what you're doing. Now, if you create, um, let's say you already had a project built and you already enabled APIs, it, it will just blow this, it'll blow through this within two seconds. There you go, see? And enabling drive API, that one's really short. And there you go, see, successfully finished. So, and look at that, bam. See, now we got our project ID set. So, okay, so set processor count. Okay, so right now it's executing the processor count as mentioned earlier. So the thing is you can only deploy two, four or six processors. May you may have noticed a slight interruption, but yeah, it looks like I need to fix that still. So, anyways, you can only do two, four, six. If you do three or five, it won't work. So we're gonna go ahead and do two. Let's let's do three as a test. Okay, good. I'm just making sure that worked. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it gave me an error about templates and stuff like that. Okay, so you can pretty much see that we have uh, our IP. I mean, our processor count set up. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to set IP. So I got a little ahead of myself there. And the reason for it was because I kind of had to go back on this. Okay, so it's asking what server do we wanna pick and what location. So I'm gonna go ahead and do US West 2. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And from here, what we should see, it'll, what it will do is it'll delete any prior uh, GCP IP addresses. So it's a good thing because it's basically fixed. So deleted it. Okay, so that's set. And right now it's creating an IP address for you. The one thing is, is that this IP address right here, it you, it will drive you crazy when you're manually doing this, but it doesn't assign it yet. So all you're doing is putting in a reserve, see? Reserve. So in order to make it work, you have to attach the IP address to the VM. And that was hell to pay. It was hard. Okay, so right now we have to pick a server type. And originally when this whole thing was coded out, yeah, it, it was just this part right here ate like a good 10 hours of my life. Okay, so we got that set. So now we're gonna deploy the virtual machine. And while this is deploying, we should almost see this kick in and we'll see the virtual instance running there. So the firewall rules earlier, I did record it, but long story short is this that it automatically builds out the firewall rules for you so you don't have any issues. Uh, again, if it's something you forgot to do, it, it just wouldn't work. So you can see here's our machine and it's going to say, please stand by. And we're going to kind of see where this goes from here. So you can see how the IP address came up and you see how it says, Hey, it's attached to VM instance PGGC. So you can see that's working. So, and this should probably almost come up soon too, or I might have to refresh it. So it's assigning the IP address to it, which is good. Um, okay. Come on up. I was waiting for this to attach. Fingers crossed. Don't want to record this again. Okay, it says deployment complete. So, oh, you know what? It didn't come up is because we are in a different ID. One thing I learned, <laughs> see, I caught myself on this. There it is. There's, there's that right there. And let's see if we refresh that page. I know it works. 
Yep, there you go. You saw it disappear. Okay, good. So yeah, you have to be on the right project to see it, but normally that's something you don't have to do. Okay, good. Glad all that worked. Okay, so the server box is now deployed. Now, how do you get into it? This is the Google box you can't just typically SSH into unless you specifically tell it to, and it's, it's a kind of a long process. But I made I set it up where you can basically SSH in here, and it looks like I need to fix that spelling error. But anyways, you can either click this, and that's a long way of doing it because you always have to come to your browser and do this, or you can do it right here. So the first time that you log in, it's gonna ask you to create a passcode. If you ever have any issues or you forget it, uh, you can delete. Uh, you can delete it and try to get in again. Okay, so it says yes, and please remember your pass key, passphrase for your for your keys. Um, you know, whatever whatever you want it to be, something you don't forget. And so, this is only a one time thing that you're doing here. After that, it will just kind of go straight into your box. So I made life a little bit more easy for you. I was kind of determined to do that. So again. This project has, it enables your, this part of the project enables your APIs. It's building out the IP addresses, the virtual machine. It's checking the billing. Good thing we haven't seen billing errors. I saw it in the very beginning when I started this video, a part you haven't seen. And there is that key-ish key thing right there. And usually it makes you do it twice. Why it does, I never understand. But basically we're in. So... The, the way you know that you're on this virtual machine here, this one here is because it says PGGCE. And I did provide a sanity check. And you notice that if I type Plex Guide, nothing happens. See? So in order to get the VM instance running, you need to install Plex Guide like how you did on your first machine. And then you select GCE edition. Once you do that, you're, you're pretty much set. It'll, it'll, uh, and the reason you're selecting the GCE edition on that, because it specifically mounts a Google Drive for, I mean, it doesn't mount your Google Drive. It mounts a... Uh, a partition, I mean, a, a hard drive for you so everything works. So in order to get out of this, you just type exit and I did provide a sanity check. You see it says connection closed. Welcome back to your main server, you see? So now you know you're here. Okay, so you're like, hey, let me change the processor count. See, some checkers built here and it shouldn't work. Oh, there you go, good, see? So it knows that if the server is deployed, it won't let you change anything. Why? Because if you change things while a server is deployed and you try to redeploy it, it's just going to mess things up. So if you're running into that right here where you want to change stuff, you need to delete the server. Now be aware when you delete the server, make sure you back up your data to the Google Drive using the backup uh, thing built in. But if you need to destroy the server at any time, you can go ahead and destroy it. You just click 9 and it'll do everything for you. So we should see this disappear eventually. And remember what I was talking about with the billing. Again, if, if, if you're getting like billing issues, make sure you don't have too many projects. Like, like I said, no more than like two or three uh, while you're using the credits. And just a little bit of a tip, if you want, let's say you run out of your $300 worth of credits, guess what you can do? You can sign up for another account, complete new account. Uh, make sure you have a different domain. I use the same domain here, so I got $300 worth of credits again, but it's been like two months. Um, and make sure you have a different credit card. If you use a bank, it's gonna, you're gonna have to wait a while because Google has to do two small deposits to your bank account in order to verify everything. So this VM should disappear. Yep, it did. And then this static IP address, I, I don't believe it's deleted, it just puts it back on reserve again for you. Yep, well, whatever. Yeah, and use by none. Okay, got it, okay, perfect. Okay, so that worked. So long story short, uh, Google will do deposits. That's the long way of doing it. So make sure you do use a different card. And then the question you may ask is, oh, if I have a different account, do I have to get a whole nother team drive? You got to remember your team drive. Remember those JSON keys and all that stuff you deploy? Well, guess what? All you have to do is do the same process on your second box or your second account. And you're back to your original team drive. When you're creating a whole new G Suite for just for credits, basically all it's doing is it's deploying a virtual machine. That is the only thing that the credits matter. You can always use, you can always log back in. Um, you can always log back into your um, main account and 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 download those keys and you're good from there but that's the whole this is the whole purpose of this video it's just to kind of give you a little bit of confidence in everything working it's good i did it uh managed to catch two more small mistakes i tested the hell out of this thing as much as i could and this was basically in a new box um if you have any time please comment uh subscribe like again it really does help plex guide 
Uh, again, I appreciate to all those who are donating because, again, it's really, uh, this is not a money maker. All this has helped me do is it, it helps uh, buy, uh, you know, uh, equipment, it buy servers, domains, and different things for testing. And sometimes I've bought some temporary expensive servers just so I can check things for members. So, again, hey, I appreciate your time. And, again, please subscribe and like. Thanks. All right, bye.